Good morning, good morning. This is the day that God has made and we shall be glad and rejoice in it. God is good all the time and all the time, God is good. I am the evangelist Sylvia Laird and I'm bringing forth the message this morning all the way from Upper Canaan Missionary Baptist Church in at 9090 Highway 51 North in Millington, Tennessee. Hallelujah. The word of God is coming from 1 Corinthians, the 15th chapter and the 34th verse. 1 Corinthians, the 15th chapter and the 34th verse. And it reads, Awake to righteousness and sin not. For some have not the knowledge of God. I speak this to this to your shame. Let's pray. Oh, Heavenly Father, Lord, I just come to you this morning telling you thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord, for this day. Because this is the day that you have made and we shall be glad and rejoice in it. Lord, I ask you to... For all your for, for your forgiveness, Lord, for known sin and unknown sin, I love you. I ask you to decrease me and increase you, it, 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 and 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 bring forth this word this morning, Lord, in the name of Jesus, Lord, creating me a clean heart, Lord, that that I will be able, that you will be able to teach this word this morning. He that have ears, let them hear what thus saith the word of God. Let this word be for instruction. Let this word be for knowledge. Let this word be for correction. And whatever it needs to be, let, let it be. He that have ears, again, let them hear what thus saith the word of God. Lord, we give you all the honor. We give you all our praises and all the glory. In Jesus' name, I pray. Amen. Amen. Awake to righteousness. First Corinthians again, and, and the King James versions, it tells us awake to righteousness and sin not. And I read, when I was looking in the NIV version, it says, come back to your senses. Another translation tell us, be awake to righteousness and keep yourself from sin. Another translation, it tells us, come to your right mind and sin no more. What are some... What are the ones right man? What is coming back to your senses? And the NIV says, it is coming back to the truth and reality that we are the righteousness of God in Christ. That we are already righteous. It is not something that we have to achieve or to earn or try to earn. But we are the righteousness of God through Jesus Christ. Now, <clears throat> this is 1 Corinthians, and this is Paul, this Apostle Paul. He was talking to the Corinthians church. He was telling them about righteousness and the importance of knowing we are the righteousness of God in Christ. The definition of righteousness is in the state of him who is as he ought to be. Righteous. The conditions acceptable to God that is, this is how we ought to be because of what Jesus has done. We are now in a state or condition that is acceptable to God. It has nothing to do what we do. It has everything to do with what Jesus has done for us on the cross. How he shed his blood for us on the cross and he resurrected three days later that made us right with god they made us be the righteousness of god now this morning i want to talk about this morning as as my title is awaken to righteousness awaken to righteousness awaken to righteousness and sin not if, I, if you think about that, awaken to righteousness, it tells me that we are asleep. According to the word of God, that we are still dead in our sins, or we are likened to be dead. The scripture says, 
We are dead in our sins until we are made alive through the righteousness of God, and that is in Jesus Christ. We are not to be deceived by evil communication which corrupt good manners. We are to be awakened to righteousness and sin not. If you're still sinning, you are not awake. You are asleep. Are we awake or are we still asleep? People think that they are above the law. They think they, there's no consequences in their actions. But God will bring them to justice. Awaken to righteousness and sin not. What sad thing sin has done to this world? We are living in the last days and true judgment of God is going to happen. We got to realize that there is judgment for your sin. In Romans 6, 23 tells us, for the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life and Christ Jesus is our Lord. Oh, how this world is being deceived by the adversary, by Satan. But there will be a day of reckoning. Proverbs 8.36 tells us, But he who sins against me wrongs his soul. All those who hate me love death. So Jesus is telling us, because we sin, we must hate him and we must love death. As I think about it in the world today, there's a lot of us that are still in our sin because we look at movies that is, and we love movies that it is about zombies, that, that those are the walking dead. And, and also we, wear, we symbolize and wear t-shirts that have skin and bones written on them. We, or we wear t-shirts that have skeletons or skull is somewhere around as a, a symbolizing. And that, that means that we love death. All that symbolizes death. That's nothing that is alive about none of those things. If we are going to be able to effectively overcome sin, we must awake to righteousness and sin not. But some of us look at it and we focus more on the, I, we shall not sin. We shall stop sinning first. But clearly the scriptures is telling us we must awaken to, to righteousness first and sin not. This is a challenge to each and every one of us and to encourage each one of us to examine ourselves. Are we awake or are we still asleep? Let's talk about the sleeper. Now we just told, I just said you said before that uh, we focus on sinning. We think we know, okay, when we get saved and everything, we focus on the, okay, I should not sin. But that's not what God wants us to focus on because Jesus already uh, uh, made us right with God when he shed his blood on the cross for us, number one. And when we accept his, him and have faith in him and believe on him and confess within our mouth that Jesus Christ cru was crucified on the cross and that he was, he was re resurrected three days later with all power in his hand and we confess and we believe in that and we are saved, then we were made righteous. So therefore, that we need to, we need to, we need to focus on how to please God. We need to focus on how righteous we need to be or we need to become to approve our self-righteousness to God, to approve our, our, ourselves to God. Now, if we're a sleeper or we're still asleep, I call them the sleeper. When you're asleep, you don't know nothing. You don't know nothing at all. You don't know the joys of the joy that, that God can give you. You don't know the peace that he can give you. You are not aware of all the evils that's all around you. You, you, you are, uh, the majority of the mankind is ignorant and they are, are asleep. They have no knowledge of God. They do not fear the word of God. They are blindfolded by the it by the ignorance of this world. They march on through the paths of lust into the everlasting ruins of their soul. They are in, in a state of insubility, insubility, sensibility. 
They are in a state. They are in a trance. It is hidden for the righteousness is hidden from it because they do not have the faith in God. They do not believe in God. They do not fear God. They are sleeper. They cannot defend themselves and they don't know even know that they are not protected by God. They have no power to resist temptation. All they can think about is themselves. All they think about is the treasure of the world. All they think about is excessive living. Are you asleep? Or are you awake? That's the question we have to ask ourselves. We can go to church every Sunday, but are we Sleep or are we awake? Are we still part of this world? Who are you fooling? You're not fooling God. You're fooling yourself. Are you awake or are you asleep? God is telling us to wake up the sleepers. You can believe the word of God to wake up. You have to mix faith with the word of God to wake up. It is truth that when we, we, we uh, the, the truth of God will set you free. The truth of God will wake you up to righteousness. And the truth of God is Jesus Christ. That he shed his blood on the, blood on the cross for each and every one of us. And, he, and God raised him three days later. And because he died, we got to understand we died too. And because he got up, we got to understand we got up too with the newness of life, no longer dead in our sins, but alive unto God, alive from the dead. If we are believers in Christ Jesus, let's not be asleep. Awaken to righteousness and sin not. Let us search the scriptures for in them we have eternal life. For they do testify of Jesus. Let us be diligent. Let us not word. Let, let us not depart. Let, let, let's not let the word of God depart from our hearts. Let us meditate in the word of God day and night. Let us be deeply rooted and planted by the tree of the rivers of water. Let us not sleep, awaken to righteousness and sin not. How do we awaken to righteousness and sin not? By having the knowledge of God. It is power. Jesus said you will know the truth and the truth will make you free. The knowledge of the truth has the power to set us free. And the knowledge of the truth has set us free when Jesus died on the cross. The blood of Jesus set us free. The blood of Jesus, Jesus awakened us up to righteousness. When you know who you are, and it's easy, when you know who you are and who you are, it's easy to live accordingly to the word of God. If you don't know who you are, you will live like everybody else or live like the world. But because you think you're supposed to, uh, you'll live like the world because you think you're supposed to. You don't have no knowledge of God. You, you, you're still living in your sin. You're still living for yourself. You th still think that, oh, I got to do this and, and uh, I'm doing this for myself and wh whatever selfish reason of your own, I got to make a name for myself. It's all about you and it's nothing about God. Through faith in Christ, Christ's righteousness becomes our righteousness. That's what we got to understand. Before we were in Christ, we all had the same background. We all were sinners. Through, therefore, since all sin have sinned and have come short of the glory of God, the righteousness of God, which is by faith in Christ Jesus, unto all and upon all of them that believe, there is no difference since all have sinned, all are made righteousness through the new birth. Second Corinthians 5 21 tells us, For he have made him to be sin for us who knew no sin, that we might be made righteousness of God in him. We were made righteous, righteousness of God. He has made sin 
with our sins so we could be made righteousness with his righteousness. This means that the new birth has put you in right standing in, with God. You are a new creature in Jesus Christ. 2 Corinthians 5, 17 tells us, Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation. The old has passed away. Behold, the new has come. Jesus, the last Adam, has restored the believer all that the first Adam had lost. Jesus has taken care of the sin problem from us. We are made righteousness through Jesus Christ. You no longer have a spirit with a nature of sin. What you need to do now is to be awakened to the fact that you have been made righteousness of God. Therefore, sin has no place in you and you have no place in sin. Ephesians 2.10 tells us, for we are God's own handiwork, handiwork, his workmanship, created in Christ Jesus, born anew, that we may do those good works which God predestined, planned beforehand for us, taking paths which he prepared ahead of time, that, he, that we should walk in them, living the good life which he prearranged and made ready for us to live. Since we are recreated in Christ Jesus and he is righteousness, then we must be. He is not a half righteous. He is not, ha and he is not un half unworthy and neither are we. Now you need to renew your mind to do that. Ephesians 4, 23 and, 30, and 24 tells us, and be renewed in the spirit of your mind and that put and that ye put on the new man, which after God is created in righteousness and true holiness. That means that our old self has to die. That means that we have to put, we have to do away with the old man. The old man has to pass away. And then the new man has to, has been recreated. We have to put on the new man because we are no longer dead in sin. We are righteousness unto God. Until we understand who we are, who we belong to, and who properties that we are, we will still be in our, be dead in sin. Even we, when we are dead in sin, have quickened us, made alive all together with Christ. By grace, you are saved and have raised us up together and made us sit together in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. He has made us worthy to sit together with him now at his right hand, when he died on the cross for us, he, he shed his blood. He, he bore all of our sin. So he made us worthy to sit together with him now at, the, at his right hand. The New Testament is written to born again believers who are in Christ. He is the one we should be identifying with, not the sinner we once was. We need to think on these things and renew our mind to the fact that we have been raised up and made to sit together with him in heavenly places because of what Jesus has done. If you don't, you would, you would continue to live in sin consciousness like that of an unbeliever. Ephesians 2.12 tells us, that at that time, before you were born again, you were without Christ, being aliens from the commonwealth of Israel and strangers from the covenant of promise, having no hope and without God in this world. God is no longer is saving us. He himself has become our salvation. No longer are attempting to get God to do something. We are trusting in God, in him, and no longer are afraid. The Lord himself has become our strength. The Lord himself has become our song. The Lord himself has become our salvation. The Lord himself has become our righteousness. 
this. This does not mean we no longer pray or seek the Lord or cease to ask him for our desires. We have not arrived at yet in the perfect rest of God where he, his will and our will becomes one. And we never will arrive there unless we have to keep on, we got to keep on praying. We got to keep on seeking God. We got to keep on asking God to forgive us. We got to keep on in the will of God and to make our will God's will. With the Lord's help, striving to keep all of his commandments. That's what we have to do. We are no longer in sin. We are made righteous unto God because we he, he created all things. And we know he created all things. He is holy. He's a holy God. So you know when he created something, he created righteousness. He didn't create sin. Sin just sin uh, came by by the fall of man, the first Adam. So when we enter life, live in the spirit of God, it is God's will for all people that they live in the spirit of God. As we keep commandments, the, the, the Father and the Son it, it comes to us and make us to, make, to, to, to transform our mind. If we keep those commandments and abide in him, he will abide in us. In us. We got to make Jesus Christ, you know, our salvation. We, we, we got to choose him and still choose in the world. And we got to ask Jesus to come into our heart. That's the greatest thing that we, we can ever do to be made righteousness with him. When the Lord himself become our righteousness, then the light of the moral nature of Jesus will be revealed in us. People will see our good works and glorify God. You hear what it said? You will see our good works and glorify God, not us, but God awaken to righteousness. For some have not the knowledge of God. I speak this to your shame. The word of God is for you and the word of God is for me personally. It's a personal thing. It will be an eternal judgment for us if we reject it. And eternal salvation if we receive it and do it. So it's letting us know that we, we got to put some action behind what we, what, what we have to do. To receive God as our Lord and Savior. That means that after we receive God as our Lord and Savior, we got to understand who God is in our life. Who we are. That's just the starting point. We got to work. The Bible is, is the only book when we can acquire a satisfactory knowledge of God. Because there, God has, has been pleased to give a, a relation of himself. A, a revelation of himself. He describes himself in the word of God. In our holy scriptures. Here he is, he is seen as the just God and the compassionate Savior, giving his son to death that he may make the sinners alive. And that's in John 3, 16. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, and whosoever believeth in him shall not perish, but have everlasting life. We got to understand that God knows all things. But when he, he has removed a veil from our understanding and shown us all that, is in our hearts, then we experience the infinite knowledge of God. But when we have been given to see sin as exceedingly sinful, that means that we God is pure, then we have to experience the purity of God. When, however, when he, he has an effect of change in a mortal nature, which is neither less than a new creation, then we have experienced the proof of the power of God that he can change anybody. He can use anybody. We, all we got to do is trust and have faith in him. When we have seen our guilt, our guilty and our undone and, and, and God will save us, that he will, our sins will be forgiven. And then we will see, we will know the power, the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and Savior. 
And it goes on and say, I speak this to, the, to our shame. If we don't know God, if we don't know the knowledge of God, we will know who God is. Nothing can be more important that the in, in, in ignorant creatures should know their safety. That weak and perishing creatures should know where their strength lies. The miserable should know where happiness is to be found. And that an immortal spirit should know its portion. God is my portion. God is my light and my salvation. He is the strength of my life. Whom shall I fear? That's what the, what the, what the believers should know and have faith and believe that that's who God is in our life. This knowledge will have, cre have considerable influence upon our duties. We are called to serve God. And we cannot serve God if we don't know God. Hallelujah. Men are not supposed to live in darkness. There is a warning against sin that all men need to know why they are not to be, why they are, are to be inflicted if you're still living in sin and in, 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 in darkness. It can command the attention of the world. Does Jesus have your attention yet? Does he? Are we still awake? Or are we still asleep? Or are we awakened to the righteousness of God? There is something about this message should frighten the sinner. You don't want to experience the wrath of God. It should frighten you if you if you read the word of God. The last message of God gives the world through a his character and love. Sin, we got to understand that sin separates us from God. The time is now. That we must confess and consider Jesus in our life. Who is God to you? While you're considering God is the way, we got to picture God in our life and the relationship that we have with God right now. Just picture that. It, this is something personal that we all have to understand. And Jeremiah 30, 23 and, 30, and 24 tells us, Behold, the tempest of the Lord, wrath, has gone forth a sweeping tempest. It will whirl upon the head of the wicked. The fierce anger of the Lord will not turn back until we have has performed and accomplished the intent of his heart. In the later days, you will understand this. Thoughts of his heart in the later days. Consider God's wrath perfectly. Believer, we are living in the last days. Ezekiel 18, 20 tells us the person who sins will die. A son will not suffer the punishment of the father's gift, and the father will not, will not uh, suffer the punishment of the son's gift. guilt. The righteousness of the righteous will be upon himself, and the wickedness of the wicked will be upon himself himself souls that sins it will it shall die ezekiel eighteen thirty one tells us hurl away from you all your offenses which you will commit you have committed and make yourselves a new heart and a new spirit for why should you die house of israel why should you die when Jesus already made you righteousness on the cross, why should you die? That's something that we all need to think about. Why should we continue in our sins when Jesus already made us righteousness with God, when he died on the cross? Ezekiel 33, 11 tells us, Say to them, as I live, declares the Lord God, I take no pleasure at all in the death of the wicked, but rather that the wicked turn from his way and live. Turn back, turn back from your evil ways. Why then should you die? Just tell us, why should you die when Jesus already shed his blood on the cross for each and every one of us to be made righteousness with God, unto God? Hallelujah. You can't escape God's presence. Understand when you can't turn back, 
When, when, when the last day, we are living in the last day, you can't turn back when judgment day is here. The time is right now. Psalms 139, 7 through 10 tells us, where can I go from your spirit? Or where can I flee from your presence? If I ascend to heaven, you are there. If I, if you, if I make, my, make my bed in shore, behold, you are there. If I take up the wings of the dawn, if I dwell in the remotest part of the sea, even there your hand will lead me and your hand and your right hand will take hold of me. The worst threat that God gives to the sinner is his love. Best news to the sinner is God loves him so much. If the sinner realized that God loves him and if he persists in his sin, God will let him have it and leave him as he chooses. Why? Because God will not force himself on the sinner. Why is it a threat threatened to the sinner? Because sin separates us from God. And separation from God is a terrible thing. If you are lost, hoping that you would accept him, knowing that you would not, he loves, knowing that you would not, he loves who loves, I mean, he who loves you is willing to let you go. That means God is willing to let you go. If you, if you are still lost in your sin and you continue in your sin, it's letting you know that God, because God loves us so much, he is willing to let you go. He is not going to force nothing on us. It's our choice. Only God can save you to the utmost. That's what the scriptures is telling you. There is a tremendous hope in God's forgiveness. We really can be clean from the stain of sin. Our good works can't clean the stain. Our best intentions or promises can't clean the stain. Our suffering or pain can't clean the stain. Time can't clean the stain. Death can't clean the stain. Only the work of Jesus can make us white as snow. We can have a new beginning in Jesus Christ. The power of sin, the shame of sin, the guilt of sin, the denomination of sin, the terror of sin, the pain of sin can all be taken away in Jesus Awaken to righteousness when we consider the greatness of God's cleansing and forgiveness. It, it is all the more reason for us to awake to sin. God wants the separation be between you and him to be gone right now. He doesn't want you to continue in the destructive path another moment. He wants the best for us right now. Awaken to sin. No season is better than right now. If you delay until you're, you're saying that until you get better, you'll never awaken to righteousness at all. Awaken to righteousness, you will never have another chance. Your heart may ne never be tender as it, as it is today. If you're hard in it, you want to give your life to Christ today, you got to awaken to righteousness. You got to have faith and believe in Jesus Christ. The time is right now. We can't waste no more time because we don't know when God is coming back and we want to be caught up with Jesus Christ. We want to hear that trumpet with Jesus Christ. Awaken to righteousness. No other eyes may be ever weeping over you. No other heart may ever agonize to your salvation. Awaken to righteousness. Wake up, wake up. For tomorrow is not promised to the world. Death may be sealed for your faith. And you, that was once filthy rag, you will be remain as filthy rag still. Awaken to righteousness. For tomorrow, like I said, it's not promised to us. Our heart might be stone hardened. We may not give in to a uh, 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 give give in to to awaken to righteousness. We might be still dead in our sins. It's not promised. The time is now. Why delay any time for your happiness? 
Why delay for your forgiveness and your deliverance right now? God yearns for you to come. The eye of the Father sees you from afar. And he, he runs to meet you, but you got to, you got to meet him halfway. He said, if you make one step, he will make one step, and then you'll be two steps closer to, to him. We got to make a decision. God said he will restore you. If you were you, 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 you thinking that you are unworthy, you're not, no, yes, you are unworthy, but he said that he will forgive you and he will restore you. He will restore everything that the enemy has stolen from you. He says he wants to commune with you. He wants a relationship with us. He wants to heal our broken hearts. He wants to deliver us. He is willing to wake us up to righteousness, but are we willing? Are we willing to to trust Jesus, are we willing to choose him? I dare you to choose him today. I dare you to awaken to righteousness right now just by accepting the Lord Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior and believing in him, having the faith and believing in him. Then you will be made righteousness. Believe and confess within your mouth that Jesus raised, that God raised Jesus up three days later, his resurrection, that what made us right with God righteousness Jesus was has made you righteousness unto God by his death on the cross and his resurrection the time is now we got to make a choice today people the time is now we got to get into the word of God Jesus is not a, a Sunday God he is he is not a Sunday and Wednesday God. He is a everyday God. He is a forever and ever, ever God. So therefore, we got to study in the scriptures every day. We got to pray every day. We got to seek God every day. We got to commune with God every day. We got to keep up the relationship that we have with God every day for him to transform you to transform your mind for him to develop you up in the word for him to train you up in the word to for him to purge some of the things that the world had put on you so you can purge that out so you can be christ-like so you can awake to righteousness the more you study the word of god the more a righteousness is awakened down deep inside of you the more you 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 think about Pleasing God instead of think about, I shall not sin. What can I sin? Uh, what am I doing? Am I sinning now? No, that's not what not, our focus is not on the sin part. Our focus is on being right with God. We got to focus on being right with God in our living the truth. Practice the truth. Living the truth. We got to humble ourselves. To God and we got to seek his face and turn from our wicked ways the time is now we got to make that choice your mama can't make that choice for you your daddy can't make that choice for you your sister can't make that choice for you your brother cannot make that choice for you it's your choice you have to make that choice you have to make that we have a personal relationship with God you have to awaken to righteousness because he already made, he already laid that out for us already by dying on the cross for us, shedding his blood, taking every strife beating that we deserve already. We already made righteousness with God. We got to commune and pray every day and be pleasing and acceptable to God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord, for the word of God. Awaken to righteousness. That's something for each and every one of us to think about. Not only the sinners, but the believers too. Because some of us are still asleep, even though we're going to church, even though we know God. But do you really know God? Is God part of your life right today? Are you living for God? Are you living for yourself? Are you living for the treasures of the world? Who are, who is God to you? Think on these things. That's what the word of God. Think on these things. Are we pleasing God? Can we say that I am awake? Or can we say that in some areas of my life, I am still asleep? 
I said that too. I, I, it's some things you have to work on. We got to pray about it. We got to seek God further. We got to stay in this word. This word of God is our blueprint to righteousness. It's blueprint to everlasting life. It's the blueprint, a roadmap to living. Roadmap to life. Everlasting life. Made righteousness to God. Awake to righteousness. It's in this word. Pick up this word. Sometimes people don't want to pick up this word, but they'll, they'll pick, up, pick up any instructions to show you how to put a weave on. Or pick up any instruction how to put on makeup. Or put on this instruction how, how to fix, fix some type of mechanic on, 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 on a car or something. Something that piques your interest. But this should pique your interest right here because... Because of Jesus Christ, because of God, he made us righteousness with him. He made us back right with him. So think on these things. Examine your life. Examine your life. What am I still asleep on? Awake to righteousness in our life. It's a must. And we must do it right now. We can't wait till tomorrow because tomorrow is not promised to us. Tomorrow is not promised to none of us. not promised to me. But I can assure you that I have awakened to righteousness. I do get into this word of God. I study this word to show myself a proof every day. I ask for forgiveness because I don't know what I've seen or what I've done. But I try to do right by God. And that's how all of us should do. What can I do to make God proud of me right now? What can I do to make God smile on me right now? Worship him. Have faith in him. Trust in him. Trust in the Lord with all your heart. Lean not to, not to your own understanding. In all our ways, acknowledge him. And then love your God. Love God with all your heart, your man, body, soul, and your whole being. And love thy neighbors as thyself. When you made righteous with God, you will love your neighbors as yourself. You will have the brotherly love for one another. But I thank God for the word of God. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Oh, Heavenly Father, thank you for the word today, Lord. Lord, I, I, I pray that it, it, it touched somebody's heart today. I pray that it changed lives today. I pray that they, that, 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 that they realize that they need your help. They realize that they need you, Lord. They realize that they know, don't know who you are and they don't know who they are. But Lord, I pray that today by your word, that they know who they are today. That they know where their help comes from. That they know that they have brand new mercies every day because of you. And because of your steadfast love for them. Because of your love, you're willing to let them go. If they choose to be still in their sins, you're willing to let them go. That's how much you love us that much. But we don't have to. We don't have to stay in our sins because we are made righteous with you, Lord. And Lord, just hope that this word will, will, will awaken people to know that we are righteous. We are royalty. We are made by your handiwork. Because you are the potter and we are the clay. You are our daddy. You are our papa. You are our shepherd. You are the good shepherd. You are the king of kings. You are the Lord of lords. And I thank you, Lord, for being that for us today, Lord. Help us, Lord, to realize that we got to know you. We help us, Lord, to realize we got to, to get into the Holy Scriptures. To know that who we are and to, to know how to live right and righteous and come into the purpose and plan that you have for our life, Lord. Lord, we thank you for this word. We thank you for you. We thank you for our creator. Hallelujah. And Lord, we just ask and, and pray of the bereavement families, Lord. We pray, we pray of the, the sick and shut in, Lord, to give them what they need, Lord. Your healing power, Lord, because we know that you can do it, Lord. In the name of Jesus, Lord, we pray for my, I pray for my pastor, Pastor Julius Hawkins and his family. I pray for the Upper Canaan Missionary Baptist family and their families, Lord. Lift them up, Lord. Lord, let them choose you, Lord, and not choose to stay in their sins, Lord. Help us, Lord. Help us, Lord, to be right with you, Lord. Help us, Lord. To, to understand your scriptures, Lord. Help us, Lord, to get into your word, Lord. 
Help us, Lord. And Lord, we thank you, Lord, for your precious son, Jesus Christ, and what he did for humanity, Lord. That the ultimate lamb of God. Lord, we thank you, Lord, the precious cornerstone. Lord, we thank you, Lord, for who you are and who you are of our life. Lord, we thank you. Oh, we give y'all the glory. We give y'all the honor and all our praises. Hallelujah. In Jesus' name of Nazareth. I pray, hallelujah, amen, and go with God. Mask up and, and stay safe. Practice social distancing. And may God bless each and every one of you. Thank you.